Curious to get your thoughts on if markets are reacting to the Singapore Monetary Authority easing policy or the fact that now they're think, thinking that the economy will enter a recession this year. What to you stands out as what markets are trading off of? Well, I think uh, the monetary policy easing was in line with expectations. Um, we basically saw the downgrade of the official growth forecast last week and the blockbuster resilience package. And I think the statement really, you know, re-emphasizes that, you know, actually it's fiscal policy that is doing the heavy lifting. So while monetary policy easing is to be expected, it's going to be complementary and not the main driver for trying to head off some of the downside risks from COVID-19. I think what was quite interesting about the statement was that, you know, they mentioned that they will continue to play a role in terms of managing liquidity in the market and in terms of being vigilant and uh, continuing to uh, curb excess volatility. So in my opinion, this is a fairly measured but expected move. And I think they are not too knee-jerk about it, even though they brought, did bring forward the scheduled meeting by a couple of uh, days. Selena, where is the shock and awe? A lot of our strategists have noted that a lot of this was priced in, as you said. Uh, they haven't come up with anything to shock the markets. These days, as you know, both monetary and fiscal authorities need the shock and awe. Where is that? Well, actually, if you look at recent emergency moves by a lot of uh, major central banks around the world, the shock and awe policy seems to work better with fiscal policy than monetary policy. Because if you remember what happened with market reactions to the Fed's uh, two emergency rate cuts. Actually, the market perception was fairly uh, negative, I would say. So I guess, in a sense, they have managed expectations quite well. It didn't come as a surprise to the market. And I think the shock and awe really came in terms of the size of the resilience package last week. So, you know, at $48 billion, if you throw that together with the uh, earlier budget 2020, that comes up to $55 billion. That's 11% of GDP. So I guess the shock and awe element already happened last week. So as far as uh, monetary policy changes are concerned, uh, what they would like is to actually have a very calibrated, very measured kind of, uh, you know, transition. They don't want to actually catch people too far by surprise and they don't want people to be, you know, caught too off guard by what they're going to do. So I think in that sense, they have actually managed market expectations quite well. Selena, in a statement, very, very clearly saying that there will be a recession for the Singapore economy this year. So in terms of not getting the kind of shock and all, there wasn't a one-off devaluation of the Sing dollar. There wasn't a recentering of the band either. Were you surprised by this? Does this leave at the MAS with a bit more ammunition? Actually, I think there's a little bit of ambiguity because if you read the statement carefully, they said that they will start the zero appreciation stance from the current prevailing level. So the current uh, senior, um, as it was trading this morning, was actually slightly below parity. So my sense is that it's a modest uh, recentering lower in a sense. Um, it, I mean, we, we probably need to get a bit of clarity on this going forward. But it could possibly have been a, you know, a, a one plus kind of a move, meaning that they actually went to zero, but they also recentered lower a little bit. It's not quite clear yet.